Judges, chapter 7. Then Zerubbabel, which is Gideon, remember he got that name because he tore Baal's altar down and grow. I guess Baal didn't do anything, did he? And all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Hardim, so that the hosts of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moro in the valley. Now the Midianites are the ones that God has chosen this time because of Israel's sins. And uh, Gideon's a judge. The nations repented to God. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, and saying, My own hand hath saved me. Gideon, you got so many men here. In the victory, God speaking, I won't get the victory. I won't get the credit. You'll say by your numbers. So we've got to do a little subtraction here. So verse 3. Now, therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, and you found this in Deuteronomy 20 verse 8. Let's go there. Deuteronomy 20 verse 8. And this is God quote in the scriptures. So God adheres to his own words for his glory. Deuteronomy 20, verse 8 says, And the officers shall speak further unto the people and, say, and shall say, What man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his house, lest his brethren's heart fail, as well as his heart. So, whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. All right, here's the orders. First order of the day. Anybody afraid, go home. That's by God. To Gideon, the officer, the captain of the host. Anybody afraid? It's in the law. And they returned unto the people 20 and 2,000. And there remained 10,000. So there were 32,000 people. 22,000 of them were afraid they went. We got 10,000 left. That is over half. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many to you imagine how Gideon's like wait now remember Gideon he's he's a mild man he's a mighty man of valor but he's afraid he's got fear of the armies and God and like David it's his heart he loves the Lord he wants to do right and he knows but he doubts but he loves the Lord. And the Lord said again, the people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water. And I, God, will try them for thee there. I'll, I'll get, I'm going to try them. And it shall be, uh, people ever say that God doesn't try anybody? He's going to bring 10,000 men down to the water. And he's going to see what these men do. This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee, and of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, and the same shall not go. Now Gideon doesn't have no idea what's going on. His orders are, okay, what are left? 10,000. Bring them down to the water, and I'm going to try them. And they're going to be men that you're not going to call into battle. I will tell you who. So he brought down the people. So see, he's obedient to God. Unto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, a Gentile, Gentiles were called dogs. Dogs are unclean. 
They're savage animals. So anybody who acts like a dog. Now what's going to happen is they come to this, this water. They're thirsty. They're going to bend down. And they're going to put their face in the water. And they're going to start drinking with their tongue. Him thou shalt sit by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. He's going to take the water in his hand. And he's going to cup the water and bring it to his mouth. And the number of them that lappeth, put in their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. So we've got 300 men and we've got 9,700. And the Lord said to Gideon, he's probably hoping the 9,700, by these 300 men, I hope, I hope they get to go home, that lappeth will I save you. So we had 32,000 men, 22,000 are afraid, they go. We're left with 10,000. 9,700 men go. Because they didn't drink the water right. There are 300 men left. That is 0.93% of the entire army that Gideon had in the beginning of chapter 7. Not even 1%, God says. Under 1%. And deliver the Midianites into thy hand. And let all the other people go, every man unto his place. Let him leave. Now it gets you 300 men against a military force of a nation. So the people took victuals, food, supplies in their hand, and their trumpets. And he sent all the rest of Israel, every man unto his tent, and retained those 300 men. And the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. So they're down in the valley. They're at a disadvantage. Gideon can go down. They got to come up. Gideon can throw stuff down at them. They got to throw stuff up. So he's got 300 men now. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Gideon, arise, get thee down into the host, for I have delivered it into thy hand. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Hura, thy servant, down to the host. And thou shalt hear what they say. And afterwards shall thy hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down with Pura his servant unto the outside of the armed men. So he is afraid. God says, get down there with, with your men like you're supposed to be. And if you have a fear, grab your servant and do this. And Gideon grabs his servant and does it. He's afraid. Outside the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites. And the Amalekites. These are the ones that God hate. They're the ones that came up to Israel when they're traveling to the promised land. And started taking out the end of the, the, the last of the people. Those were sick weekly. That Moses would, would got up holding his hands up that Joshua would win the battle. Here they are again against Israel. These people are against Israel. God said, I will curse them that curse you. And all the children of the east lie along the valley like grasshoppers for a multitude. Man, this is filled. It's just heads and heads of heads of helmets and, and people and men ready to fight. And God chose 300 Israelites. Wouldn't you be afraid to? And their camels were without number, as the sand by the seaside, for a multitude. 
Well, there's a lot of people in that valley. And when Gideon had come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow. Two people in a tent. One has a dream. And said, Behold, I dreamed of a dream. Now Gideon's outside this tent listening. I have dreamed a dream. And lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled. It's, it's rolling like tumbleweed into the host of Midian. We came into the army of Midian and came unto a tent, a tent, and smote it, the tent, the people in it, that it fell, and overturned it, that the tent lie, lay along. So here comes this one tent, it's defeated. And this fellow answered and said, This is nothing else, save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. Now he's outside, him and his servant, listening to this. I... One of the enemies say, I have a dream. The other enemy, the friend of the, of the enemy of Israel say, well, you know what? That's going to be Gideon of Israel. He's going to win. A man of Israel, for into his hand has God delivered Midian and all the hosts. Wow. It's the enemy. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream... And the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped God, and returned unto his hosts of Israel, and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered us, has delivered into your hand the hosts of Midian. Now look at that. By the interpretation, by the sign thereof, Gideon is ready. And he divided the 300 men into three companies. So now we got 100 groups, three groups of 100. Man, it's dwindling down, dwindling down, dwindling down. And he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers, which you hold, pottery, and lamps within the pitchers. So inside the pitcher, he's got lamps, a candle, a light. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise. Now please get this story. So when we finish the chapter. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, when we get to the, to the boundary line where the enemy is, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. Almost like Simon says. What I do, you do. That's the orders. He has not told his people what he's going to do. What you do, what I do, you do. When I blow with a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets. Also on every side of all the camp. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice sounds dead. And say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. That's the first time the sword of the Lord shows up. That's of Gideon. And that's quite interesting. The sword of the Lord. What it's doing is God is first. God's going to give us a victory. The word of God. No, not the word. The sword. In this war, God is going to get the victory and he's going to use me. God first, me. That's five times in the Bible. Next time, verse 20. We'll skip down to 20 real quick. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all. And they cried, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. 1 Chronicles 21, 12. The sword of the Lord. 
First Chronicles 21, verse 12. This is quite interesting. A little outside story, but I didn't pose it. I'm just showing what the Bible says about it. First Chronicles 21, 12. And David gets in trouble for numbering Israel. And God sends Nathan. I mean, excuse me, sends Gad. And he tells Gad to tell David, he says, David, you're going to get one of three punishments. And I want you to choose which punishment. And the punishment we're going to read is the sword of the Lord. We're not going to read the whole chapter, but 1 Chronicles 21, 12, either three years famine, Ouch. Three months to be destroyed before thy foes. The enemy is going to just attack you like Saul did. While that the sword of thy enemies overtake thee like Saul did. Or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroyed him throughout all the coasts of Israel. The sword of the Lord, pestilence, and the angel of the Lord destroying. Verse 15, God sent an angel into Jerusalem to destroy it. That's the sword of the Lord. People are dying by the sword of the Lord. There's death by the sword of the Lord. There's going to be death in the Midianites of the sword of the Lord. Isaiah 34, 6. <clears throat> Isaiah 34, 6. Okay. Entertain my voice tonight. Isaiah 34, 6. Now, I did not have no part in this. I'm just telling the scriptures. Scripture, scripture. Isaiah 34, 6. Isaiah 34, 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the, blood, for the Lord has a sacrifice in Basra, that's North India, and a great slaughter in the land of Indomia. That's a poetic name for Israel. Verse 8, For it is a day of the Lord's vengeance, the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. That's the second advent. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. The sword of the Lord is pestilence. People dying. The sword of the Lord, Midian's going to die. Jeremiah 12, 12. Notice how the number 12 keeps showing up. Jeremiah 12, 12. Jeremiah 12, 12. And the spoilers are come upon all high places. Oh, that's where false worship was. Incense burning. Worshiping false gods. Through the wilderness. For the sword of the Lord shall devour from the one end of the land, even unto the other end of the land. No flesh shall have peace. That's an interesting. Sword of the Lord. Now, not sword of the Lord. We know this is God. We know this is the angel of the Lord. Revelation 19. You're not going to find the sword of the Lord, but you're going to find the sword. Revelation 
the second advent of Jesus Christ, which seems to be the context of the sword of the Lord. <clears throat> Revelation 19.11 And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. He that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. So here's a sword of God, blood, death, people dying. That's the sword of the Lord. Verse 19 of Judges. That's the first time the sword of the Lord shows up in 18, 666. In verse 19 of Judges, so Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. The three watches, I believe. <clears throat> and they had but newly set the watch. So it's the beginning of the watch. And they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. So here it is all of a sudden, boom, it's dark. Now there's all of a sudden just light and trumpets. Confusion. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all. And they cried, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And Judges 7, verse 20, the second place, the sword of the Lord shows up. And what we read about the sword of the Lord, under the title of John R. Rice's newspaper, the sword of the Lord, it's Judges 7, verse 20. Why? Why would he take the sword of the Lord when the scripture was scripture was scripture, blood, death I don't know but that's where he gets the sword of the Lord newspaper it will be another interesting thing when we get to the end of this chapter but I'm, I don't know I ran the verses of the sword of the Lord and I don't know if that's what you would call your Baptist newspaper killing people Maybe you thought, you know, Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is a, is, a, is a sharp sword, but that's not the contents of the sword of the Lord. You should have just gone the word of God, uh, Hebrews 4.12. But that's what he did, just showed you what the scriptures say. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. And all the hosts ran and cried and fled. Man, this is a panic. This is terror. What just happened? We're blinded. This is almost like when you go, you get up in the middle of the night. You walk in your kitchen to get a glass of water or something. You turn your lights and you just spook all the cockroaches and they run. There's a wonderful verse in here, John chapter 3. The Gospel of John chapter 3. 3 Oh what do we want to read 318 He that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, 
neither cometh to the light that his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest. They were wrought in God. You know what this nation should have done? They should have, when they saw that light, they should have came to Gideon and say, we want to get right with God. But instead they fled. It's light. That's all it is. It's light and trumpets. Verse 22. And, there, and the 300 blew the trumpets. That must have been loud. 300 men scattered in different positions in three different ranks. Lights and trumpets. And the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow. The Midianites were killing the Midianites with their own swords. That's how much of confusion God had made it. It's not Gideon doing the battle. It's the Midianites against the Midianites. Even throughout all the hosts. And the hosts fled to Beth Shida. You have to be careful I say some words. And Zerah. Zerah. I'm trying to pronounce it with my dead voice. And to the border of Abel Mullan unto Tabith. And the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Nephtali, and out of Asher, and out of all Manasseh, and pursued after the Mennonites. Now here comes Israel battling. And Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Mennonites, and take before them the waters unto Beth Barak and Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters unto Beth Barber and in Jordan. And they took two princes of the Midianites, Orb, Orb and Zeb. And they slew Orb upon a rock Orb. And Zeb they slew at the winepress of Zeb. And pursued Midian. Winepress, that's picture of second advent. And pursued Midian and brought the heads of Orb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side of Jordan. So here is victory over Midian, that God got the victory. Men died. Let me read you something. We shall be called Gideon, Gideons. Only three men were present at the meeting in Janesville. John H. Nicholson, Samuel E. Hill, and Will J. Knights. They organized with Hill as president, Knights as vice president, and Nicholson as secretary and treasurer. When it came time to decide to name the association, the men held a special prayer time to ask that God might lead them to select the proper name. After Mr. Knight rose from his knees and said simply, We shall be called Gideons. He then proceeded to read the story of Gideon from the 6th and 7th chapters of Judges. As much as the sword of the Lord, what does this have to do with handing people Bibles and giving them the gospel? This is what I find weird in Judges chapter 7, the sword of the Lord, and let's call ourselves Gideons, and then read 6 and 7. There's blood, death, and killings. Right, that's just, I'm just reading that to you. I'm not going to make no comments. Just that fact right there. 